Agricultural Bank of Namibia's Agri-Advisory Services Division offers training to farmers and bank clients in various farming enterprises in all 14 regions of Namibia through face-to-face -face sessions. The AgriLearn online platform will share production content on various agriculture farming enterprises to build the knowledge of farmers from all walks of life. Join us as we embark on this virtual journey towards sustainable farming as we zoom into the basics of crop and horticulture production. Good day, farmers. My name is Heng Sai Sai. I'm the technical advisor for crops and poultry within AgriBank's Agri-Advisory Services Division. We are going to talk about pest and disease management in crop production operations. I'll start off by saying that pests are harmful organisms that attack and uh, eat on your crops. And then we have a number of pests according to categories. The first one is the chewing uh, pests. These are the pests that you always identify or see on the leaves of your vegetables and they eat the leaves of your crop. The second group is known as the sucking pests. So these ones, they come specifically for fruit vegetables whereby they pierce a small hole on uh, your vegetables and fruits and then they suck out the sap from the fruit. And then you have the stinging pests. These ones, they only just sting the, the fruit and then there will be an infection on that area around the sting. And it's quite common for tomatoes when the fruit flies sting your, your tomatoes and then they have that brown rotting spot. And then last, last but not least, we have the soil pests. These are the ones that you can see with your eyes because most of the time they live underground. So their focus is to only eat on the root systems and some of them can be cutworms and earthworms. They cause serious damages to your root systems of each crop. And once they have targeted the root system, you start experiencing wilting of your crops. And then apart from just the pests, we do have uh, diseases. So diseases, these are conditions whereby they affect the normal optimum operations of a plant or a human being. And then it's a condition that results from many other aspects, but in crop production, they can only be parasitic diseases. These are the type of diseases that are caused either by bacteria, fungi, viruses, and then they can sometimes be an occurrence of non-parasitic diseases, which can result due to poor management and nutritional deficiencies. With uh, parasitic diseases, I'll give a common example of uh, potatoes and, uh, and tomatoes. They always suffer from a fungal disease called early or late blight. So this, this disease occurs due to certain environmental conditions. You'll find that if you are growing potatoes or tomatoes in an environment where there is a lot of humidity and warm temperatures, immediately when you add water and your irrigation system allows water to be on top of the, the plant covering the leaves and the stem, you will find an occurrence whereby the branches, the leaves and the stem will start developing uh, fungal molds like the mold you find on bread. So that kind of condition is stimulated by environmental conditions whereby you have high, high temperatures with high humidity and moist conditions. So that environment always favors the development of fungal diseases. And then if you are to look at uh, non-parasitic diseases, these are diseases that are okay because of deficiencies. And it's always common in vegetables. If you don't add boron, in sufficient quantities, for example, the deficiency of boron can be explained or can be seen by the aspect of leaves folding and having a bit of a brownish bronze color. So that tells you that the soil is lacking bronze, it's not getting enough uh, boron, for example, and that is what is now leading to the scalding and folding of your leaves. Sometimes these uh, Non-parasitic diseases, they okay because as a farmer, you didn't prepare the soil properly and understand the nutritional requirements of your crops. For example, if I come into this garden and I see that this, the, the cabbages, the beetroot, and the spinach, they have yellowing on their leaves. For example, if I take this uh, spinach leaf, if I'm seeing such a condition, then it will tell me that this specific crop is lacking nitrogen. That's why this leaf is now turning yellowish. So this is 
a deficiency. It's not, it's not a parasitic disease. So there are many ways in which you can combat uh, pests and diseases. The first user-friendly or economically or an ecological friendly method of controlling pests and diseases is crop rotation. So if you are growing cabbages, after harvesting your cabbage, do not regrow cabbage in the same piece of land or same block. Rather rotate it with a different crop such as onion. And then you'll find that the diseases and pests that attack onions will not affect your cabbage. So most farmers who have now realized that onion has a natural scent which repels insects, they grow most of the onion on the outside blocks and their desired vegetables are grown within the onion barricade. The other common one that you can use is to ensure that you do early planting. So most microorganisms are active when the temperatures are high. So if you go for early winter planting, you will find that the activity of microorganisms is reduced. So if you grow crops such as tomatoes earlier while the temperatures are still a bit cold or cooler, you will find that the rate at which insects and ants are attacking them is reduced. But when it's hot like now, when the temperatures are above 35 degrees Celsius, you'll find that the activities of microorganisms are highly, highly optimum. That is the time when most microorganisms are now trying to get as much food as possible before they go into hibernation during winter. And then if you realize that you have tried the ecological friendly methods, but they are still not very viable for your operations, it's time to bring in chemical pest control. So with chemical pest control, it's one way you can eradicate the problem completely by using synthesized chemicals. The one that I have here is an insecticide or a pesticide known as Odeon 720SC. So you mix this with water and then you spray all your crops and then it will kill anything that comes into contact with your crops for a certain period. But what is important when you are using these chemicals is to ensure that you have the right protective gear and you ensure that after spraying your crops, you give a grace period of at least three weeks before you can start consuming and harvesting your product. Because if you harvest it three to four days after spraying this, this can be harmful and it can become very fatal. It can kill a person because these chemicals are highly, highly corrosive. The other method in which some farmers control pests is to ensure that they bring in the biological enemy of the problem, a uh, small microorganism. So if you have a problem with worms, you have a problem with aphids, there are certain enemies that nature introduces to take care of that problem. Some farmers, they use their chickens, they allow, access, they allow their chickens access to their gardens so they can scout and eat all the problematic worms from the crops. Other farmers have realized the benefit of certain microorganisms, such as the ladybird bug. You can use it to address the problem of aphids. And if you have a problem of ants, you can always make use of praying mantis. They will help you to regulate the population of ants in your crop and all these aspects. When it comes to management of diseases, non-parasitic uh, diseases are easy to manage because it's always a, an issue of nutritional deficiency, so you address that. But if it's parasitic diseases, there's technically almost no remedy that you can use to address it. But what you can do is, the only diseases that you can address are fungal diseases. They are fungicides that you can buy and spread on your crops to just minimize the damage. But to be effective, you just need to pull out the infected plants and then destroy them. And then you rotate the crops. And that way, you will have a sustainable system. Because remember, if you haven't done proper spacing and you use a lot of mulching material that is rotting and decomposing, such as grass, it can harbor pests and bring in diseases. So you must just be very careful with your management and how you prepare your soils. Make sure if you use chemical uh, pesticides, go for the selective ones, and then you buy a range that only targets a number of microorganisms, and you don't end up killing the useful ones, like the bees, the wasps, and all these other insects that help in plant pollination. So always buy the ones that are written selective uh, pesticides because they only target a group of microorganisms that they can kill. 
So if you do effective control of pests and effective control and prevention of diseases, you are likely going to experience a good yield from your production and that will also sustain your business. So in short, that is what we are covering under pest and disease management. That's it for now. Join us next time for more valuable insights. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to avoid missing out on new content. Also, follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram pages for more content.